If there's one key feature missing from WooCommerce, it's the ability to filter and sort your products in any meaningful fashion. In today's video, I'll give you a quick overview and a demo of the free Filter Everything plugin and how you can quickly and easily add all manner of filters and sorting options to your WooCommerce stores. Now, while I'll concentrate on using WooCommerce for this example, you are not limited to only using that for your filters. Filter Everything, as its name would suggest, allows you to filter pretty much anything inside a WordPress website. So if you're using tools like advanced custom fields, creating custom post types, those kinds of things, they're all filterable. If you'd like a video on how to use this plugin with custom post types and custom meta fields, drop a comment below. And if enough people are interested, I'll create a video covering exactly that topic. Okay, so let's kick things off by checking out the plugin we'll be using in today's video. So first of all, this is the filter everything plugin we're going to be taking a look at. This is the free version. There is a pro version available and that's available over on Code Canyon for $40 for a single site license. However, today let's just stick with the free version. So this gives us most of what we should need to do most things. Okay, so plugin gives us the ability to filter and filter by lots of different things. So we can use normal built-in WooCommerce tools and options, you know, sizes and things like that. We can also use it with advanced custom fields and so on. So really, really useful if you want to have a lot of filtering options available and you have zero budget. Now, at the time of recording this, there's only currently about 400 plus active installs. So you can take that for what it's worth. I would recommend testing it out on a development site, not on a live site, just to make sure it does everything you want and does it the way that you want it to. Okay, so that's what we're going to be taking a look at. Let's take a look at how we actually start using it. Now we've seen the plugin and that there's a premium version available, let's move on to actually seeing how the plugin works and what options we have to configure and customize things. So let's simply go over to the option to add a new filter, search for filter everything, and then go ahead, download, install, and activate it. Once installed and activated, you're going to have a new entry inside your dashboard for filters. And inside there, you've got three different sets of options. Let's quickly take a look at the settings to make sure everything is configured the way that we want it to and see kind of some of the things that are available to us inside here. Okay, so we can go ahead and we can enable or disable Ajax inside here. So if you find that you are wanting to just problem solve, if there's any kind of issues, then you can just leave Ajax disabled and make sure your filters are working before you go ahead and set up the Ajax option. We'll come back to take a look at that in a little bit. But inside here, you can set up how things work on mobile devices. You can set up your primary color to make sure it matches with your site design, the filter container, those kinds of things. So nothing too exciting inside here, just kind of things that you'd want to set up to make sure it all configured correctly. Inside your URL variable names, this is where you can see a list of all of the different URL variables. And I'll come back to these variables in a moment once we start to set up our filters, but basically all they are is what you include inside the URL for a specific part of your filter. So this C, for example, is working for categories. So that's all it can really means. Experimental gives us some extra options inside you, which are things that you might want to test out on a test site, but not on a live site. So again, take these for what they are and try them if you want to. We're going to leave those as they are, and we're going to go over to the filter sets option. And this is where you can create your grouped filters. Now you can see I've created one called WC filters for the WooCommerce install that we're currently using. I'll trash that for now, and we'll start with a completely fresh one. Now, these are just basically ways of grouping multiple filters together into one little grouping. So you may be using different filter sets on different parts of your site, and you can create those and group them together for ease of use. So we can create a new filter set, or we can just go ahead and click on add new. Both will do exactly the same thing. So let's click on add filter set. And now we're going to do is going to give this a name. We're just going to call this filters. And underneath that, we can go ahead now and we can set up the filter or filters that we want, where we want them to apply to, and then we can go through the different settings and so on. You see some things inside you are restricted to the pro version, but again, for most use cases, for most users, you won't need to worry too much about that. Okay, so the first thing we've got is the post type filter. What is it going to apply to? Expand that out, you can see we've got post, page, or product. For this example, we're gonna choose product. Once we do that, we can now go ahead and add a filter. And then inside there, we can now choose what type of filter this is and we can configure it to do what we want. So the first thing we're gonna do is give this a name. So we're gonna just call this categories. Filter by, and this is where we can choose what we want the filter to apply to. 
So again, because we're working with products and product categories, we're gonna come down and choose that option from here. But you can see there are lots of options, including custom fields, custom field numbers. And if you want custom field exists, so you wanna check that, for example, then that's a pro only feature. But we're gonna choose product categories, you can then see the var name for URL or variable name for the URL. This is pre-filled out with the C in this example because I've already gone ahead and tested things out. So now this has been associated with the categories. We'll take a look at creating another different filter inside here, which won't have the variable name associated with it, just so you can see how that works. Next up, you're gonna see how do you want this actual widget to be displayed? Let's expand that and you can see we can choose between checkbox, radio buttons, and so on. Checkbox is perfectly fine for this because we may have lots of different categories, but if you wanted to change that, choose whatever you want. Now you can leave it there if you want to, or you can click to expand the more options, and this gives you as its name would suggest, more options. So now you can go ahead and choose the filter logic. So you can set this to be and or, so you may want to stack these in a different way. You can also go ahead and set up the sort terms by, so you can set this by ascending, post count, terms ID, so on. So there's lots of different orders inside there for you, all the options in there. You can exclude terms if you want to. So you can see we can just totally strip out any categories you may not want to actually include inside here. And you've also got things like folding, show selected, show hierarchy, and a tool tip. So you can configure those as you want to. In any way you're not sure, you've got a little help symbol. It'll tell you what this actually means. Okay, so we'll just leave that as it is. We'll choose the less options and we'll leave it to the default. If we scroll down then, you can see we have some options available to us as the settings that are not part of the pro. So we can say hide empty terms and show count. Entirely up to you how you'd want to set those up. I'll leave them as they are for now. Okay, so there's our first of our different filters. Now we can go ahead and add another one in. So this time, let's create a different kind of filter. Let's say we want to set this to be a price-based filter. So we'll just say price, filter by. Now, because we're dealing with WooCommerce, we're going to be using a custom field numeric. So we'll choose that from the custom fields option. And you can see this now opens up the option for the meta key. If we open this, you can see all of the different meta keys that are available as part of the site based upon the theme, any plugins you may have installed, those kinds of things. We're going to search for price. And you can see this gives us a range of different types. So we could do price include tax, regular price, sale price, so on. We're simply going to choose the option for price. You can see the variable name for URL. So again, we can put something inside here. So you might want to just put a single letter, price, whatever you kind of want to put in. For this example, we'll just put in something like max underscore price. And you can see it defaults to put in the range as an option, as the only option available inside you because we are dealing with the price side of things. So again, you've got your more options if you want to open this up and configure anything slightly differently. The number of steps this particular slide is going to go up and down is so if you have larger values like properties, for example, you may want to win thousands or tens of thousands. You can set that up inside you as well. We'll go ahead and leave those as they are. And we'll just go ahead and save our filter set. So we'll click on publish, providing everything is in place. It will set things up for us. Okay, so now we've created our first set of filters. Now the next step is to see how we can add these filters to our website. In this example, I'll be using Elementor, but you absolutely do not need to use it. You can just as easily add the exact same filters into your website by using the sidebar function in your theme of choice and add in the relevant widgets directly inside there. Okay, so let's just fire up Elementor and see how we can start adding in our custom filters. So for this part, I've already gone ahead and created a product archive template inside Elementor. So let's go ahead and start adding in our filters. Now you don't need to use Elementor, you can just use ordinary Gutenberg if you want to. Okay, so this is the design we're currently working with. I've disabled any kind of filtering, any kind of sorting, anything like that. This is just literally showing the archive of products, nothing more. So let's simply come over to our widgets and we're going to search for filter everything. And you can see inside there, we've got three different widgets we can drop in. And this is exactly the same if you're using the normal Gutenberg editor and you're using it part of your theme with the widgets, you'll have these same options inside there as well. So what we're going to do first of all is drop in the filters option. So we're going to drag that into the left hand column. And inside there, you can see this now just pre-fills this out with some basic info. We can put a title in if we want to, so for example, filters. And we can also specify whether you want to show the little chips, which are basically the reset and those kinds of things. And if we want to show, to show the number of posts found for any particular given product section. We'll disable both of those and we'll simply hit update and go and take a look at this on our site. And here's our shop page with our two filters in place. You can see there's our category filter 
and also our price filter. And you can see this is pre-filled out based upon the prices that are available as part of your WooCommerce store, automatically done for you. Now you're only seeing this edit filter set because I'm logged in as an administrator. Users won't see this. So you can see we can easily just come in and adjust the pricing. This will then update the filter and show us only the ones that fit into that pricing structure. And if we want to, we can say we only want to view plans inside that pricing structure and they stack on top of each other. Pretty cool as what you'd expect from a typical kind of filtering setup. You'll also notice we get these little sort of sections at the top that allow us to see exactly what's going on. And we can cancel any of these filters by simply clicking on the X to close that down. And then it'll retain the rest of the filter there for us. Or we can simply go ahead and click on reset all to clear all of those filters and give us everything back. Filtering is great, but it would also be useful to be able to add in our own custom sorting options. Can this plugin do it? Let's take a look. Let's go back and do a search inside here for filter everything again. And this time we're going to grab the option for filter everything sorting. We'll just pop that above our actual content. And you can see what this does now is this will load in a set of different predefined filters. So default sorting, alphabetic, reverse, oldest, first, and so on. And again, you can give this a title if you want to but all of these are totally editable. You can remove anything you don't want and add new things in and reorder if you want to. So you may say you want your title alphabetical to be first, simply drag that into position and that will update. If we click to expand this out, you can see we can adjust the title. We can choose the order by and inside there, there are lots of different options, including things like meta keys, meta key numeric, product ratings, those kinds of things. So you should have most things that you'd need for most stores inside there. And you can see we can also set them to be ascending or descending. So lots of options. And if you want to add more inside here, you can simply click to add more, give it a name, follow all this information and just fill that out. We'll delete that for now and we'll simply hit update on there. And we'll pop back over to the front end of the site and take a look now with the filtering in place. So let's refresh our page and there's our filter option. You can see default sorting is the first option, but if we click to expand that, we can change this to by title, by reverse order, oldest first, and so on. So let's say alphabetical. And you can see that now is in alphabetical order. If we come back up and we say we want to set this to be something like the oldest first, you can see the order now updates to show us the oldest added product. And again, you can still go ahead and you can stack these filters on top of the sorts as well. So we can set this to be plants, for example. And now we're seeing the oldest first only looking at plants. So at the moment, there's only six products inside you. So everything you'd kind of need to set up these filters to set these sorts and everything inside this plugin. Now, if you'd like to see a more comprehensive tutorial on using filter everything, let me know in the comment section below. Now, if you got value from this video, please feel free to hit that thumbs up button as it really does help me out. My name is Paul C, this is WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.